Newton showed that the mechanical philosophy didn't work. There is no material world that conforms to the mechanical philosophy. Newton regarded this an absurdity. So did Leibniz, uh, Huygens, the other great physicists of the day. And in fact, what and they were correct. What happened is that the idea, the hope to develop an intelligible world disappeared. Science changed its goals, lowered them, didn't care anymore about whether you have an intelligible world, just whether you have intelligible theories of the world. That's a big difference. So Newton's theories were perfectly intelligible. Leibniz could understand them perfectly well. Newton understood them, but they weren't what Newton called a physical theory, one that explained the world in intelligible terms. Einstein's theory is intelligible, the theory, but not the world it describes. It's in a total abandonment of the mechanical, of any notion of intelligibility of the world, giving it all up. So it's like Newton's theory. Yes, the theory is intelligible, but it doesn't bear on the questions that the great scientists who founded modern science were concerned with. We've given that up. Nobody tries anymore. In fact, when you get to, say, Bertrand Russell, who knew the science as well, he said the search for intelligibility is ridiculous. Put it aside. It took a long time for this to settle in. But now it's just become scientific common sense. We just abandon the goals of the scientific revolution. Galileo, Newton, Leibniz, other great figures. We abandon their hopes. We just lower our sights to try to develop intelligible theories. Newton's was intelligible, but not quite right. Einstein's is intelligible, does a little better, but it all abandons the aspirations that led to modern science, given all those up. So, uh, yes, we, we have been with, there's no longer any body mind problem because there's no body. Okay. We just, and we don't care. All we need is an intelligent, like Locke pointed out, let's try to do in the wake of Newton, let's try to find a, intelligible theory of how mental actions take place. Uh, we've abandoned any hope of trying to find out what matter is. So uh, uh, Newton himself said, we know so little about matter that for all we know, all matter is alive. Uh, Arthur Eddington, a century ago, went beyond that. He said, we know so little about matter that for all we know, all matter is conscious, like atoms. We don't know that they're not conscious because we don't know anything about matter. Well, same with Einstein's theory. Yes, the theory is quite intelligible. You can teach it to students. Uh, they understand it. But it has abandoned the hopes and the aspirations that animated modern science. Those have been given up. Now, this was actually understood by 19th century historians of science like Friedrich Lange, take a look at his great book on materialism. He points out that modern materialists have simply abandoned traditional materialism. They're willing to accept notions like force and field and so on, which they understand, but have no material uh, basis because we've given that up. Uh, well, that was the mid 19th century. We should be able to understand it today. Science just abandoned the goals of the scientific revolution. Very important moment in the history of science. Took some time to sink in. So if you take a look at Newton, uh, he himself said, look, I, I can't give a physical explanation for anything. His famous comment, uh, I do not make hypotheses, was in that context. Said, I'm sorry, I, I have no hypothesis about science. That's why his major work is called Mathematical Principles. It's not called Principles of Philosophy. Philosophy meant science in those days. It took a long time 
even at Cambridge University, his own university. They didn't teach Newton's theories for about, I think, 50 years because they weren't physical theories. They were just mathematics. And uh, so it's not science. And finally, science just abandoned hope. Said, we're not interested in this anymore. We have lower goals. Okay, probably the right move. But there's no longer any dualism because there's no body, no matter. The same is true of consciousness. The discussion of consciousness is very misleading. There's a fine philosopher, young philosopher, Galen Strawson, Peter Strawson's son, who's uh, written extensively about this, and I think he's right. He's pointed out that the whole contemporary discussion about consciousness is completely backwards. Uh, it's, it's not, there's no problem of consciousness. Consciousness we understand better than anything else. We have a perfect understanding of consciousness. I can describe in detail what my consciousness is, so can you. What we don't understand is matter. So we don't understand the relation between consciousness and matter because we don't know what matter is. As Arthur Eddington put it, for all we know, all matter is alive, it's conscious. Actually, Strassen himself pursues this, tries to develop the panpsychism. I don't agree with him in that, but I think his basic observation is correct. Uh, Bertrand Russell said the same thing a century ago. He said, what we know best is consciousness better than anything else. And that's what we're most confident about, what we know most about. The rest of our intellectual explorations or attempts to ground this in something. And there we run into trouble because we don't know what matter is. That's basically correct, I think.